Hi, Heather here from Creative Kiwi. Welcome to my latest embroidery tutorial. Today I'm excited to show you how to create this in the hoop cutwork mandala design using your embroidery machine. This design is another one of our large applique placemats, or you can, as I've done in one of my sample, use the design as a centre for a dream catcher. With that version I just added an extra uh, design which is a coaster design on top just to give it some extra dimension. This is all included in the download file of the design together with photo step-by-step -step instructions which include more of the detail regarding fabric cutting and hoop sizes. The design itself is, is relatively simple. There's one segment that is stitched out eight times with the joining as you stitch them through and then a center added. Uh, you can use multiple colors as shown in this photo or a faster one is just a one fabric for each segment. Both versions start out the same so we're going to get right into it and start stitching. Probably the most important part of the whole design is using the correct stabilizer and hooping well. So you can see here we use two layers of the fabric type water soluble stabilizer not the plastic solby, but the actual fabric like, and we pin at the edges just to ensure there is no movement in their stabiliser. Now you're going to load um, the file name with the A in it, so dependent on your hoop size and whether you're using multiple fabrics or uh, one fabric, they both start with file A, which as you can see on the picture, you stitch the placement line onto the stabiliser, then you place a piece of batting over that line and stitch out the next colour to attach your batting. Now also on the batting it's going to stitch out um, placement lines for the different colour fabrics but also for the one fabric version it stitches the holes that we need to cut out. So we remove the hoop from the machine and what we're going to do is just cut away all that excess batting. Now there is a gap, you can see there's um, gaps on the side and basically it's just keeping the batting out of the seams. And as you can see there, you stab your scissors in there and you cut away just those four centre pieces. This is obviously going to give you your gaps in your cutwork mandala. Part of the video, I'm just going to show you the fabric placement for multiple fabrics. Um, as I say, each segment is made the same way, so I'm just going to show this multiple fabric segment first, then I'm going to carry on with the one fabric version going right through and joining. So you would place your fabric first colour over the top piece and attach. Now all the detail of the colours, thread colour numbers, is in the instructions, so you really do need to have your instructions next to you in addition to this video. So we're cutting out that fabric, that first fabric piece, the red piece, then we're adding the second piece of fabric on top of the hoop, and again just going to stitch that to attach. Again, removing the hoop from the machine, we're just going to cut away that second fabric piece. Now you can do this at the machine. Um, I just find it is you get a much better cut if you actually physically remove the hoop from the machine. And obviously using sharp scissors is a bonus. Um, a lot of times I use duckbill scissors on my applique, but when I was making this, my daughters have been in my workroom and I cannot find them. So I'm just using normal old dressmaker's scissors. As long as they're sharp, they will do the job. So for the multiple one, we've got the third fabric pieces there that we're just going to cut away. Back to the machine, the fourth fabric colour. And I can't wait to see what you guys make with these because you do... Um, I have some fantastic colour combinations and fabric combinations with these multiple ones. I'm pretty boring, I've just gone with the rainbow. 
and the last piece. Now this is all on the front of the hoop, so we haven't done anything on the back as yet. And last piece, we're just cutting. Now, on the back of the hoop, this is where I just put one piece. If you had wanted to, you could put the rainbow colours on the back at the same time. Now, you can tape the fabric onto the back of the hoop, or I'm just showing you how I actually do it. So, I just float my backing piece underneath the hoop because you can see through the stabilizer and you can see that the piece is flat underneath. You're going to do another round which is just going to stitch down your backing fabric and give you a nice cutting edge to cut out the back backing fabric pieces. So same as before you're just cutting away the excess fabric and including the pieces in the little cut work. Now I only show this the one time because every single piece you make after that follows the same thread sequences, the same construction. You're just putting on your fabrics one by one. Once that's done you're adding your backing fabric and doing the same thing. You get very good at it by the final segment. The final part for the segment is once you've cut away all that fabric on the back of the hoop, you return the design to the machine and stitch the zigzag stitch. And that just stitches all the raw edges to ensure you'll never have a problem with registration. Now I'm just going to show the fabric placement sequences for one fabric. Now, now this is a faster uh, stitch out or faster construction or if you're new to the style of design, it's probably a good one to start with. So the same as before, we've stitched the placement line onto the stabiliser, attached the batting and got the placement lines. With the one fabric one, what you're going to do first is attach the backing fabric. Now you can tape that with the right side of fabric facing upwards. You can tape that on the back of the hoop or as I did before, I float the backing fabric afterwards. I'm sure we'll see. Yes, we will. Here I've got the right side. So that's facing downwards towards the machine and I'm floating that underneath the hoop. As again, you can see where the fabric is and you can make sure there's no folds. Now for this time, you're just going to place the one piece of fabric over the front. Now you could do this with eight different colour fabrics, uh, but it just means you're not having the five fabrics per segment on this, this version of the design. So as before, you're just going to stitch uh, the next colour and that's going to attach the front and the back and going to give you nice cutting lines to cut out or for the cut work. Now I've used matching bobbin thread throughout this design. Um, it does use a few bobbins, but it certainly looks good on the front and the back. Just as we did with the multiple fabric one, we're just going to cut away the excess fabric on the front and the back. Uh, like most good things, there is um, the, the key is in the preparation and certainly this part cutting out all the fabrics, while it might take a bit of time, it certainly makes for a really nice finished product. And once again, sharp scissors are the key. You end up with the segment the same as with the multiple uh, fabric segment where you have um, all the holes cut out and all the excess fabric cut off. And the next part is again to the machine and it's just straight out embroidery from this point. So you have the zigzag which goes and does the raw edges. The next colour would be the inner quilting 
and the colour after that is the satin stitch. So you'll see I didn't make you watch everything stitch out and like magic this is your first segment completed. So you, I've just used one colour, you can use two colours, one colour for the quilting and one colour for the satin stitch. And that's it, so stitch file A is finished. Again you do this with every single segment, you're just going to remove it from the hoop and cut away the excess stabiliser. Now you cut as close as you can to those side edges with the raw edges and just cut closely to the satin, sti uh, satin stitch. You'll um, remove that stabiliser later. So there you can see the front and back. The next step you've got the same segment but it's called file B and you do the fabric placement and cutting exactly as you did before. Now the difference is we have a joining stitch. It's in the file and as I say read your instructions with in conjunction with the video. Now for placement you want to place the stitch line upon stitch line and kind of work out um, visually where that satin stitch is going to go. And you can tape it in place onto the stabiliser. And then the machine is going to do a zigzag stitch and just join your first piece to the second piece. Now you want to check that the zigzags covered both parts of the fabric, that's the most important bit. If it hasn't, sorry, you're going to have to rip it out and try again, but you, you get better at this as you go. But as long as it's covering both sides, that's what you need. And then you're just back embroidering again. And what it's going to do there is embroider all the detailed quilting and then onto that satin stitch which covers the join and completes the segment. Just as we did before, you're going to remove the hoop from the machine and just cut away the excess stabiliser. Again, get as close as you can to that the raw edge on that right hand side. Just makes it easier when you join the next time. So there you go. You've got two segments. Now you're going to continue with that same file and you're going to do the exact same steps for the next one, two, three, four, five, six times in total. Then you need to change to file C, which again is the same file, it just has two joins on it. So you're adding your fabrics as you did before, whether it's one piece or multiple pieces. So for the final joins, again, exactly the same as before, you're going to start on that right hand side with rejoining. So you tape it in place. Now this sample's a 5 by 7 um, size, fits quite nicely there in the hoop. If you've made the bigger one, you might find you need to fold that left hand side out of the way. But the join is the same as before, it's just down that right hand side. And you're just making sure that the zigzag covers both sides of the segments. Then we're off the machine again. And we're just going to do a join exactly the same, but on the left hand side. Tape it in place. And that's the final zigzag join. And that's your outer part of the mandala will be complete after this. As long as you're happy with the join, then you carry on with, as before, you have the quilting stitches and then the satin stitches. Back off the machine again and just cut away that stabiliser.
So the next piece we're going to um, use the center file and similar construction as before, the placement line is stitched onto the stabilizer and we've just got those added um, guidelines just to help you with centering because what you're going to do next is place the entire man mandala there over the center. Now you've just got to visually place this basically. We've got the lines there but you obviously want it to be as centered as you can be and again you're taping in place. Now you can use more tape than I use. I don't like stitching over tape, you'll see in the video. So I probably don't use too much um, masking tape. Now the next design or next round just stitches the outside of the mandala to the stabilizer. And see there me stopping. I just don't like stitching over um, tape because I think it gums up the needle, makes it stick later. Now it does goes around twice there just to give you a cutting edge and you'll see at that point if you have uh, placed the mandala a little bit off center I mean you can see I've done it a little bit um, there'll be a gap too much gap one side and not enough on the other uh, I'm pretty close with it I'm not too worried and then using some sharp scissors you can cut away the excess on the inside This is just to help with the final stitching. That way you haven't got too much bulk in the, um, in the center. So the next thing we're gonna do is just add our backing fabric on the back of the hoop. Now this time I do tape it, the fabric to the back because I can't really see underneath to make sure that it's centered. So I don't float it this time, I do tape it. Now I missed it here, um, if you want to put batting in that centre you can add batting and the front fabric on the top of the hoop. Uh, because this particular version I was going to I make into the dream catcher, I didn't actually put batting in the centre. So you stitch the fabrics and then this is the inner design, which you can skip if you don't want the inner design. I always have them different colours so that if you don't want the centre design or you want to add your own, you can add it at that point. So there you are, we've got the front and the back attached. And like we have in every other part of this construction, you're just cutting away that excess fabric. Back to the machine and this is the last bit. Now what happens here is it just does a zigzag around the circle or the centre and then the satin stitch and the decorative stitch and there is your mandala. Just cut away that excess stabiliser and it's complete. The last part is to remove the excess stabiliser. Now you can use a, a Q-tip and hot water and just go around the edges to remove the uh, stabiliser around the edges and the centre or um, probably the easiest thing to do is pop the whole design in the wash and that removes all traces of the stabiliser so it's gone completely. If you're wanting to add the optional centre, like I did for the dream catcher, um, it's just another one hooping coaster, which is included in the design file. Uh, the instructions are in the step-by-step -step written instructions in the design pack. Now I've attached the centre with my sewing machine um, because it's going to be on the dream catcher. I don't want it to come off. You could just use fabric glue, but it's not hard to use your machine. I've threaded my sewing machine with the same coloured thread and then I'm just basically stitching through that centre circle and stopping and starting as I need. 
with the decorative stitch you won't notice the uh, straight stitching going through through that center and as I say I've done that because um, it's going on a wall so I don't want it to the fabric really to get old or anything like that and come off to actually attach the design into a dream catcher, I haven't included instructions for. I've put a couple of photos. Um, it was my first time doing it, and I'm sure you will get better um, instructions on YouTube. But basically, I just um, used beads and attached it to the ring, and then wrapped the ring. Now, this particular size was the 5x7, and I used a 45 centimeter ring. Either way, I'm sure you ladies will be far more creative than me and come up with some wonderful ideas if you do want to use the design as a dream cat. A huge thank you to my team who helped so much with ideas, stitching out of designs, testing, proofreading instructions. And for Kay, who makes better videos than I do, really couldn't do it without you guys. Thank you so much. And for those of you who have watched this video right through, thank you and I uh, hope that you enjoyed it and I look forward to seeing your completed mandalas on the Facebook page. Thank you.